In 2025, a major shift is taking place in the business world where many of the most successful companies are quietly changing the way customer calls are handled. Where once they relied on entire call centers, they're now replacing them with AI agents that speak and sound just like you and me. It might sound like something from a sci-fi film, but before your team miss another call, I'm gonna show you how to build an AI agent that picks up for you, it speaks naturally with the client, collects their details, and arranges a time for a callback. All of which is sent straight to your CRM for you to review. If I heard this, I'd probably be skeptical too. So instead of me just explaining it, let me show you exactly how it works in action. Hi there, you've reached AI Amy at Happy Homes. Everyone's currently busy helping other clients, but I can take a quick message to make sure someone gets back to you. Can I start with your first and last name? Yeah, hi, it's um Harry Moore. Thanks, Harry. What message would you like to leave? Yeah, um, I think I left my left shoe at the shop last week. Just just the left one, though. Um, if you see it, can you tell it that I'm coming to pick it and collect it? Got it, Harry. When would be the best time for someone to get back in touch with you? Oh, first thing tomorrow would be great, please. Thank you, Harry. Someone will be in touch with you first thing tomorrow. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye and it hangs up for me. This will go through our automation in the background, process the call, extract the information, and in just a moment, there it is, put straight into our CRM, which I'm just using Google Sheets as a placeholder for this. It's got the client name, it's got my phone number, a message left, and call back time, first thing tomorrow, call cost, eight cents, duration, 45 seconds, everything I need to know in order to, to later process this. Now, if you like what you see, what if I told you by the end of this video, you'll be able to get an AI agent up and running just like this. I'll go into detail about how to prompt the agent so it stays on topic and behaves bespoke to your business. I'll then show you the powerful automation that leverages AI to extract information from the call and deposit it straight into your CRM, as well as cross checks, which identify if the customer has called before. Stick with me to the end because I'm sharing something. They'll make this whole process possible on easy mode. And if you're new to the channel and don't know who I am, my name is Harry Moore. Over the past three years, I've delivered software solutions for businesses ranging from small brands to major global corporations. A few months ago, I shifted my focus entirely to providing voice AI systems that do more for less. As part of that mission, I'm giving the first five business owners who click the link in the description something special for free. All I can tell you is that it's personalized your business and worth over $500. But Without further ado, let's explain how this voice agent works. Now, to make it easy to understand, I've just made a quick diagram just to go through what the typical process would be when this call goes through. So to begin with, we'll get a call coming through and the hope is that you'll have a member of staff answer the phone for you. And if there's no answer, then instead we get it divert to voicemail. That's a typical example. Well, instead of this, we can have the call provider direct instead to our AI agent, which is on Vapi. This agent will then be able to pick up the call, ask them the relevant questions. Now to give some examples, we would have questions such as, what is your full name? And the message they wanna leave behind. It's also quite important to know when the user wants to call back. So we'll also ask for appropriate callback time. Now these are all the things that the AI agent will be able to ask one after another. So it doesn't feel like a please wait and answer this, this, and this. It will ask one question at a time, feel like a natural conversation, rather than being what is effectively a glorified voicemail service. We want a bit more than that. And that's where this gets smart. As the call ends, we'll then be able to fill out some information into our CRM. So in this case, I'm using a Google Sheets document just to best show this. So Vapi will then be sending all the information over to a service called NA10. And these are our automation workflows. Now, once it's gone through to NA10, we'd need to then give the client its own unique identifier. That's done by NA10, but if they notice the client has called a second time, we'll have to have another process in NA10 to determine that. If that phone number is already in our CRM, we'll then be able to reuse that same client ID, and that makes it much easier for filtering later on. Now, the client name will be something extracted from an agent within NA10. Then we we'll would also be able to take the phone number from Vapi that's already generated, and I'll say blue for Vapi. Client ID is green. The client name will be another thing extracted. The message left would also need to be extracted from the call. And then the callback time is last thing. And everything else, such as the cost of the call, the duration, call summary, 
cool recording URL and the transcript all provided via VAPI. So NA10 will be able to pull that information and then document that straight in. So our AI agent within NA10 will be needing to get these one, two, three, four bits of information. But before I explain how it's done, let me first give you an example of what the call would sound like. Now this should run through our event and we can see now it's executing. And given this is the first time I have phoned up, it's generated an ID for me and filled it in straight to the spreadsheet without me having to touch a thing at all. And we can even see the message that I left, which I have some more information about my viewing tomorrow. And we've got the callback time by 8 p.m. today. And that call literally cost six cents, which is great. Now, I'm going to show you what happens if I was to phone up again. And this time, I'm going to be leaving a different message. But I should be getting the same client ID. And this is what the top row of the NA10 workflow will be doing. So we should see that running next time. So let me phone it up. You've reached AI Amy at Happy Homes. Everyone's currently busy helping other clients, but I can take a quick message to make sure someone gets back to you. Can I start with your first and last name? Hi, it's Harry Moore. Okay, Harry, what message would you like to leave? Yeah, I just phoned up early and I'm just checking to see if someone actually got my message. Got it, Harry. When would be the best time for someone to get back in touch with you to confirm this? Oh, as soon as possible, please. Thank you, Harry. I'll make sure someone gets back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for calling Happy Homes. Thank you. Bye-bye. And there we go. Now, what we should be seeing here now, it'll execute again, extract the information from the call, and then append it into our CRM with the same client ID. And it's going through. And it's gone for the top one. And there we go. Exactly the same client ID. And now it's got my message saying, I just phoned up earlier. I just want to be checking to see if anyone's actually going to get my message. And call back time as soon as possible. That time, about eight cents for a 39 second call, which is great. And then if I really need to, I've got the call summary and the whole call transcript and even a recording of the call, which we can turn on and off. Uh, usually it's best to, to let people know that we are recording the calls. Now, let me show you how it works by building it. So I'll give you a quick demo about how we built this. Now, the actual voice agent itself is using VAPI. Now, here we can see I'm using OpenAI to be the actual model that generates the responses. We're using 4.0 at the moment, but this obviously will be updated whenever new JAPTD models are out. But at the moment, this is a great balance between performance and latency, which we want to keep as low as possible in order for quick responses from our agent. So I got this first message here, Amy AI from Happy Homes. All that message, I put it here, making sure immediately I'm asking for them for their first and last name. Now, here, we're then going to be given the role and the context, which is really important. So if anyone wants to go and throw off the conversation a little bit, this acts as a guardrail to make sure the agent's not going to dive off topic and it's going to go, look, my role is to do this, and this is what I'm meant to do. This is my context. I'm only going to do what is in those guidelines. And then we can go into some specifics. It's very important when we're dealing with ChatGPT that we're not going to have any hallucinations. So we're not going to assume any information and making sure we ask only one question at a time and make sure we get the response rather than moving on and forgetting it because it's important that every question actually is answered. So this means it can handle if people go off topic, it will still come back and go, look, I need to get your name. Now we've got the task and conversational flow. So this is the order we want to make sure the questions are asked. Tone and style, we're going for polite, friendly, helpful, and professional. And then end call guidelines so it knows what to do. Thank them for the call. And then a few extra notes, usually more the negative things. So do not engage in extended conversation. Do not verbally announce that you're ending the call. Certain things like that, just to make sure we get it as human as possible. Now, this is quite a small prompt. Typically, with the builds I'm used to, we'll be doing three times the length of this. And that means we can do much more complex things. But for the purpose of this, this is very short, keeps it cheap, and it's exactly what we need for something as simple as this. So we'll be using that. Maximum of tokens, 120.6 of a temperature. That just means it's a bit more uh, creative with its responses. We want this one to be quite friendly, so we're going for that. And for the voice, we're using 11 labs. I particularly like them at the moment. There's some most realistic voices. And the model I'm using is 11 flash 2.5, which has got very low latency and yet still sounds really human, which is great. You can go for 
more complex models, but this just is the perfect balance at the moment for me. Now, other important things we'll need is the transcriber. We're using DeepGram with Nova 3. That is what's going to be transcribing all the voice into text. Though, if this is wrong, then it might mishear people and spell things wrong. Now, don't need to worry about tools. Predefined functions, make sure it can actually end the call, which is a lovely little feature. So we don't have to rely on people going, oh, is the call still going? And then they get themselves. This is all handled by the agent itself. We've given it permission to do that. And last thing is the messaging. Now, this is where we're going to be sending the data after the call ends straight to our NA10. So it's important that we've got all this set up correctly. Now, server URL, this is currently a test URL, so I could demonstrate and visually show you what happens in an N8N instance. Now, if we want to actually get this URL, we can find this within the webhook. Test URL that I used here, it will be here, but if you're using in production, get the URL from this. This means we can leave it running without ever executing it, all done in the background. You just won't be able to see it for testing purposes. You know, where I can see these nice green overlays, just so no, it's properly working. We're passing through transcripts for the client messages and then server messages, end of call report. By default, there's more than this, but this is really the only things we need to be sending through. How I want it to end, I like to say bye-bye. I think it's a nice balance between formal and relaxed. Idle messages, just if the user doesn't respond, we cover that. It asks to make sure they're still there. Then we've got maximum number of idle messages. We will only ask it once. You know, you might want to give it more chance, but obviously every second that goes in this call and they're not talking is going to be a cost. So we like to keep that as small as possible. And now that's everything with this agent. We need to make sure we get it connected with a phone number. So I recommend going through your phone numbers here. This will be then set up with Twilio. Now Twilio means we can have a number we can actually give to the network provider. So instead of trying to give them some API key or other things, we can just say, look, could you just make sure that when we get a call and no one picks up, instead of going to voicemail, we want the call to divert to this number, which is our AI voice agent. It's a number that no one gets to see as a customer. So it keeps it quite hidden. No one has to worry about it feeling unprofessional. This number can be anything. Generally, just keep it to the same country that you're in. Right now, the actual run through of the agent. I've obviously got the webhook that is receiving the end of the call, taking all the information from that and sending through. Now I've built I'm using an information extractor. This is what is using and powered by AI. I'm using a free model for this. So using open router, I can actually put in a model through this. I'm using Gemini 2.0 flash. That means very, very low cost next to nothing, but there are a whole number of other different models you can use from free um, to more in depth stuff. But this is only needs to be kept simple since this is a simple prompt. We're just doing information. Now I want to get the user's first name. I've given it some examples just to make sure we get the output correct. Usually we don't quite need this, but if we're dealing with a lot of calls, it gives you that extra bit of confidence that we're not going to have any issues at all. Extra information that doesn't hurt. Now we want to get the surname as a variable, the message left, the callback time, all of these I'm giving description, telling the AI how to get this information from the transcript, which is what I'm providing at the top here, telling it you're an expert extracting in specific information from a transcript that you received transcripts below here. And it does that. And you can see here, it's caught all those four variables that we're going to need name, surname, message left, callback time. This is then passed on to the next part. So because we are handling repeated calls from different clients, we want to make sure that we can actually check if they've called before, before we add them to the CRM. So this step here is checking to see if that exists. So you can see here, it gave an output based on the fact that I called the second time. So how this works, looking through our documents, which is a voicemail CRM, looking for the sheet, checking there's a phone number there. Now that means we know that this user has called before. Rather than going for name, there might be clients with the same name, but different phone numbers. This is the unique identifier. So much more safe to be using that. If that finds anything, it'll pass on information to this if statement. Now this is checking if the client ID exists. Now this CRM lookup will only output data if there is a match and therefore we'd get a client ID here. We can see this if there's a match. So that will populate this if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then we'll be going down the false route, which will be the first call. We'll generate a client ID. Now this is using a bit of math 
and we're doing this to generate eight random numbers. This then gets passed on and now means we can append it into our sheet where we're passing all the information into our CRM. I'll show you how this works because they're very similar. Uh, obviously, I haven't included phone number right now because I don't want to be sharing my phone number on this call, but that's very easy to add. It's exactly the same for this setup. This is the only one that has addition of using the existing client ID rather than the new one. So every information we can find here, we can simply drag and drop nice and easy, have as expressions, just fill out everything. You might need to look through the webhook to get certain information, everything you can search. So call summary, for example, if I search that here. So we can get any information from the search bar and use that here. And then just to finish up, since the client ID is different, that's going to be provided by here, we call it client ID, and it will show up just on your input value, drag that in, all will work. And there you go. That's a very simple explanation about how to create this workflow. Now you can get a lot more advanced than this. Obviously I've only used Google Sheets for this, but there are CRMs you can integrate. You can do more advanced checkups and generations, but just for the sake of this video, kept it nice and simple. It means you've got something you can get started with straight away. Very little time set up, very little to go wrong as well. But as long as you follow the guidelines in this video and copy any of the information I'm going to provide in the cheat sheet in the link in the description, everything you need is there. So thank you for watching. And if you want to find more information, make sure you subscribe and give a like. I'll be producing a lot more videos on this and you'll get a lot more information in order to how to make the most of the AI boom that we're going through. Thank you.